Okay, first lecture video. I know the lighting isn't great. Uh, I'm experimenting with making these from home. Also, fair warning, I'm gonna show you guys my messy house, but uh, there's a dog here that might bark at any moment, keep you on your toes. Um, Frank, be good. Okay, we'll try it. Uh, so, got this example pro uh, problem for you. Suppose uh, we want to determine whether this collection of uh, two by three matrices is linearly independent. Um, so we've determined whether vectors are linearly independent, so column vectors in the past, um, so back in chapter one, I think. Now we're looking at a collection of matrices. In these instances, it's important to lean on, um, do you want to knock the computer over? Uh, your actual definition of linear independence. Uh, so a collection of vectors, and then, and now when we say vectors, what we mean are elements of a vector space. We don't mean necessarily like a column of, you know, one, two, three. Uh, in this case, what we're referring to as, as quote unquote vectors are these two by three matrices, which are elements of the vector space M two by three. So the vector space containing all two by three matrices. Um, so your definition of linear independence is uh, vectors, let's say V1, V2, V3, are linearly independent if the equation C1 times vector one plus C2 times vector two plus C3 times vector three. If we solve this equation for the scalar C1, C2, C3, where this is equal to the zero vector, if the only solution is the trivial solution, where C1, C2, C3 are all equal zero, then the vectors are linearly independent. If there's any non-trivial solution, then the vectors are linearly dependent. So let me put on here real quick, has only, I have a small, much smaller whiteboard here at home, so I gotta conserve space a little bit, but has only the trivial solution which is when C1, C2, C3 are all zero. So to if we want to determine whether these matrices are linearly independent, switch back to black here, then we want to determine whether the equation C1 times the first matrix okay plus C2 times the second matrix plus C3, seeing how visible this is for you guys. I'm gonna adjust the lighting and things like that. I just wanted to get some stuff up and running here. So C3 times the third matrix equals uh, zero vector, and I know I've been talking about this, or was, it's been a few weeks, but um, zero vector can ref can take different forms depending on what the vector space is. If we're working in this vector space, M2 by 3, then when we say zero vector, what we mean is the zero matrix, the 2 by 3 matrix whose entries are all zero. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, good. So now we want to solve this equation for C1, C2, C3. Uh, okay. So here's where I may skip one step just because of the space on the board here. If you distribute C1 times each entry here, so you'll have negative C1, C1, 2C1, you get the picture. Distribute C2 times each uh, scalar in this matrix, same thing here, then what we'll get, let's see. So first entry here will be negative C1, and then we'll add to that 2C2, and then we'll add to that, uh, whoops, one C3. So there's our row one, column one entry. Okay, uh, let's do column one, row two here. So three C1 plus zero times C2 plus two times C3. Okay, this entry here will be one times C1, negative one times C2, negative one times C3. Okay, this entry will be one times C1 plus two times C2 uh, plus two times C3. And then here we'll have 
2 times C1 plus 3C2 plus 4 times C3. Okay, last one. 0 times C1, 1 times C2, uh, negative 1 times C3. Blue equals the 0 vector. 0 matrix. Okay, let's see. So if this, all of this, is equal to the zero matrix, that means that each individual entry in this matrix must equal zero. So I'm going to kind of pick and choose. I mean, this looks like my simplest expression. So if this is equal to zero, then that would mean that C2 is equal to C3. So let me box that up. Um, need another color. If this must equal zero, then that means that uh, 3C1 equals negative 2C3. Mm. How about I solve that for C3? So divide both sides by negative 2. So negative 3 over 2 C1 is equal to C3. Whoop. Is that visible? Ooh, it's right in the glare. Let's see if I can turn you guys, turn your, no, that's not going to help. Uh, okay, yeah, it's fairly visible. Okay, so here, I'm going to get rid of this area right here. We're done with that. Okay. So I have C2 is equal to C3, which is equal to negative 3 over 2 C1. Okay, this is what we know. Uh, so let's just go into one of these equations. Uh, Oh, and I have green, I just haven't, oh well. Uh, let's substitute that, all of that, into this equation right here. So this must also equal zero. And here, if you're wondering why am I jumping from this particular entry to this one, I'm just looking for the simplest expressions. So this one seemed like the simplest one overall. This is the other one that only involves two of my unknowns. And now just this one doesn't, you know, the coefficients are all one or negative one. So that's why I chose this expression here, but you could choose, the, you know, any of these other ones, that would be fine. Uh, if we substitute what we know there, let me get rid of this here, then that would mean, okay, so C1, let's see, I'm going to write everything in terms of uh, C1, I guess. So C1 minus C2 which C2 is equal to negative 3 halves C1. Uh, minus C3, whoa, lids are flying everywhere. Uh, C3, which is also equal to negative 3 halves C1. And so now, and that this must equal zero, because that's this entry right here. Every entry has to be equal to zero. So what's this say now? C1 plus 3 halves C1 plus another 3 halves C1. So that's going to be C1 plus 3 C1, which is 4 C1 equals 0. How are we doing? So 4 C1 equals 0, which means C1 is equal to 0. And now the dominoes are going to fall. So if C1 is equal to 0, then C3, which is negative 3 halves times 0, is going to have to equal 0. And then C2 is equal to C3, so that's going to have to equal 0. So now we've shown that this system has only the trivial solution. C1, C2, C3 are all equal to 0. So this equation does only have the trivial solution. So that proves that these matrices are uh, linearly independent.